educatedly of her there. Um, so please take some time to come up and admire them if you haven't already. All the items have now been sold. So sorry if you were wanting to buy anything um, that I like next year. <laughs> um, but you can still look. Um, and the sales that we have raised have well all all of the proceeds will go towards guns to garden next year. And so far, um, that total is four thousand five hundred dollars. Um, you may notice these lovely pink roses on the communion table. Um, and as many of you may know, it's the uh, one year anniversary of uh, our friend Marty's passing. Um, Marty could always be counted on to bring a dozen red roses when an evergreener passed away or a single yellow rose when a child was born. Um, and so it just felt fitting to bring roses to remember her on this day. Um, so we send to her in wherever she is now our thoughts and we honor her um, with our song. And now I invite CK up for a mic a moment. Good morning, I'm CK Harley. I'm one of your MICA delegates. MICA is the Memphis Interfaith Coalition for Action and Hope. Uh, we are working to organize people and money to have power for justice in our community. Kat Leach is your other delegate. Latifa is on the MICA core team. And Beatrix is also on the MICA core team, but she wasn't feeling well. So Adam is here in her steed. <laughs> And we hosted this morning the Sunday Dish and Dish about your self-interest. Um, we have a little education about what that is, but in short, it's not selfishness, where you only care about yourself. It's not selflessness, where you only care about others. But it's kind of like how Evergreen says, we flourish alone and together. It's understanding how you and what you care about, what affects you, fits into this community. Um, so we want to know, for Evergreen, what we care about, what's in our guts, what keeps us up at night, um, so that we can be better delegates to you back to MICA, and so that we can get more support from MICA in doing what we care about. Um, so there's a lot of energy, for example, around Guns to Gardens, and that's probably because that's in our gut, right? Usually the thing that we're self-interested about, we have a lot of energy for. So if you weren't able to make it in our conversations this morning about that, don't worry. We have a little self-interest form to gather that information from you. I'm going to send that around. Take one off of the clipboard. You can turn it in later. And where you'll turn it in is at this back table by Patrick's office in this bin. So we'll be looking forward to learning more about what you care about so that we can represent you well. Thank you. Now I invite you to rise and by your spirit as we bring in the light. The living God has created and formed each of us. God has called us by name and we are God's. When we pass through the waters, God is with us. God says, I'm about to do a new thing. Do you not perceive it? May our hearts and imaginations be open to God's leading. And may the light of love guide us. Let's worship God with joy.
Stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Even you guys, everybody stand up, stand back up. <laughs> you can hold boxing, you can hold boxing. I want everybody to come over here to the windows. Everybody come to the windows. Come to the windows, come to the windows. Everybody, find your space in the windows. Kids, if you want to build your parents, you can. Or if you want to come sit on this lovely bench, you can. You want to sit on the bench, make sure we have room, okay? Let's make sure we have a little more like that. There you go. All right, y'all. So, I want us, if you did not know, earlier this week, it was Earth Day, okay? And we talked about Earth Day earlier last Sunday. I want us to take time to look outside of this window or these windows, and let's find something that we can take appreciation for. One of Mr. Corey's favorite things to do is to be in nature, all right? Uh, Miss Betty, where is your favorite place to be in God's creation? Out there, like, or anywhere. Where's your favorite place? Is it to be at home? Is it to be by a river? Is it to be in a library? Is it to be um, at the bookstore with your mom? Home. Home. Okay. Okay. Well, 
let's see. Miss Sylvia, where's your favorite place to be in God's creations? In my home. In your home. Everybody wants to be at home. What about you, Miss? <laughs> The bird, oh, okay, the bird house in the zoo. I want to sell on that. Yeah. 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 I like that. Yeah. Miss Roll, where is your favorite place to be? Um, at the zoo. At the zoo. I like the zoo. What about you, Miss Matthew? Where is your favorite place? Home. Home. Everybody wants to be home. Abigail, where do you like to be? Um, I like the park. Yeah, because you play soccer. Yeah, all that cool stuff. Yeah, I do ask you boxing. Bo oh, boxing. 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 Where is your favorite place? In a box. <laughs> got it. <laughs> I got it, but listen, listen. All right, so I want you guys, I want you guys to just take about 10, 15 seconds, okay? And I want you to find something that you can pray for, okay? God created all of this stuff out here. Maybe it was the car. Maybe it was the person in this car driving by. Maybe it's the leaves. Maybe it's a cat that you may see coming out. Maybe it's a fly. Maybe it's a bug. Whatever it is, I want you to take about 15 seconds Look outside and find something to pray for, okay? And then I'll pray. Loving God, creator of all, we are so grateful for the beautiful earth that we live on. As we enjoy the beauty and the bounty of the world, may we take the responsibility to preserve and to care for each part of the creation that we come in contact with. Help us to continue to learn about and be good stewards of all that you have put in front of us. Amen. Thank y'all. here at Evergreen. Uh, it is a really, really exciting day. It's been a busy morning already, but one of the big excitements of today is that Kate Cunningham is going to be preaching and uh, delivering, proclaiming the word for us this morning. So you can already tell a few fun things about Kate from the bio on the front and obviously the, uh, the cat picture inside of the bulletin. But I just wanted to take a moment um, to say that I'm just really, really thrilled that, that someone who is uh, has so much enthusiasm and energy and wisdom and thoughtfulness and passion uh, and a great sense of humor is going to be preaching for us this morning. Uh, someone who has uh, been really active with you, Kirk, since she arrived here in Memphis and uh, has become active at Evergreen, joined Evergreen, and uh, was discerning where the spirit is leading her as she goes on to Duke Divinity School and, and this whole, you know, some people are just... They have a lot of gifts and talents, so like zeroing in on one thing, um, that's, that can be difficult. And Kate was someone that I thought, oh man, I do not envy her and, and her many talents and interests, because uh, this is going to be tough to kind of figure out where the spirit is really leading her and the intersection of all these, these things she's passionate about, especially medicine and ministry. So uh, we are thrilled to, uh, to have her this morning, and um, yeah, Kate. Verses 1 through 12. Borrowing from Beatrix, hear now the word of God. When the day of Pentecostal arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now they were dwelling in the Jerusalem. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. 
At the sound, the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. They were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each one of us in his own native language? Great for me, I have these words. Um, Parthenians and Medes and Elamites and the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya, Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Christians and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? Um, I'll just repeat that last phrase. They said, saying to one another, what does this mean? We describe the Bible as the living word of God. It breathes with us. It is qualified to answer all types of modern questions and wonderings alike. So I asked myself many times over the past week, today, God, what does the scripture mean? Let's pray and ask God to reveal the word to us. Dear Lord, I want to thank you for this awesome opportunity um, to speak in front of this church that has um, just supported me so, and in front of my friends and family members that have also supported me. Um, thank you for putting these folks in my life, and thank you for giving me this opportunity to um, to be you know, a, a vehicle for your word and your messaging. Um, I pray that I can speak what you want me to speak today, Lord, and that people can hear what you want them to hear. In Christ's name, amen. amen. Um, so in preparation for today, I had a couple of conversations with another pre-ministry youth group student who is both conveniently the son of two pastors, two Presbyterian pastors, and also just an intelligent, dedicated student of God's Word. I borrowed a Presbyterian commentary on the book of Acts from this friend, Joni, and the book discussed these folks in the Bible, these apostles, being filled with the Holy Spirit, and it highlights the linguistic details surrounding Luke's perception of the Pentecost using the phrase, the liberated life of praise, stole that straight from the book. Mm -hmm. um, and the author of this commentary, Lloyd Ogilvie, describes this liberation as the freedom to receive what the Lord will do by offering praise and gratitude for what has already been done. And I'll be honest, the liberated life of praise sounds awesome. <laughs> sounds like something that I really wanna be a part of. I would love to feel liberated, free to receive more blessings, but tangibly, I didn't feel that the Holy Spirit was leading me to dig into this. I don't quite know how to describe it, but although my head was really excited about seeing the word liberation, um, my heart wasn't pulled by the very Holy Spirit that these verses and acts are describing. In fact, I wasn't sure I was feeling the Holy Spirit at all, which sucks because I had just invited my knee to travel for seven hours to come here. So in a panicked, somewhat last minute fashion then, I spent my Thursday praying for God to reveal the Holy Spirit to me, to help me recognize it so that I would have something to say to you guys this morning. Um, and finally, I opened my phone and I read the verses that Johnny had sent me a week ago when we were talking about what I might preach. But I'm choosing to believe that God had me wait to read this so that God could laugh at me, um, <laughs> because Johnny had sent me Romans 1, 9 through, 19 through 20, which says, for what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in all things that have been made. So the people are without excuse. And so I read that and I was like, dang, God, you can't find the Holy Spirit and apparently I'm without excuse. <laughs> and so I have this passage in Acts and I started thinking about Acts in the early church. I imagine that there are a lot of decisions to make. Christ has just ascended into heaven. Um, and so these people, these apostles, are having to figure out how they're going to start this church, how they're going to grow and live with Christ when Christ isn't there anymore. And I imagine there's a lot of anxiety surrounding that. They're asking, how do we become people of God now that Christ has ascended into heaven? How do we properly worship God? What does worship even look like? And now, after the Pentecost, how is the Holy Spirit revealed to us? This verse in Romans shares that God is revealed plainly to us, that the Holy Spirit is everywhere, intentionally in all the things that have been made. So why is it then that God can be so hard for us to find? I once had a mentor, Reverend Narcisse, if any of y'all know him, um, tell me that until I found my voice as a preacher, I should mimic um, preachers that I look up to and try and imitate their flow. But unfortunately, I've never been to Belfast. 
So I can't tell you a story about my young adult volunteer. <laughs> Um, so instead, just wait, it's a two-part joke. So instead, I thought I would talk about something else that might be foreign to some of you all. I grew up in the Southern Baptist Church. Um, and the Baptist services are admittedly quite a bit easier to follow than some other denominational worship services. No shade to the Presbyterians. Their straightforward worship schedule has but one very obvious strength to me. It is accessible. And when thinking about the service in Acts, or excuse me, these verses in Acts and the service that I grew up in, I believe that the presence of God is found in accessibility and belonging. The word says that when the day of Pentecost arrived, around 120 followers of Christ were all in one place. The Holy Spirit came upon them and allowed them to speak in their native languages, to understand each other fully and completely. They have been communicating previously, yes. But there's something uniquely special about the Holy Spirit allowing these folks to speak in their native tongue. This allowed them to share their truest selves with each other and with God as they all praised together. New languages open up exponentially more ways to express praise and poetry and love for God's kingdom. I think about one of the first things, maybe I talk about this later, so I might be going off script here. But I think about one of the first things I learned about Greek was all the different ways that you can describe the word love. There are all these different words in Greek that mean different types of love. And so by offering, the Holy Spirit offers all these different languages. The Holy Spirit's offering the truest and fullest form of poetry and accessibility. People are allowed, like, it's allowing people to express their full selves. Um, this miracle is one of accessibility and belonging. Apostles were brought together and experienced true kinship as they praised God. Later in Acts 2, it says that awe came upon every soul and that the folks joined the apostles Oh, excuse me, the folks that joined the apostles were together and had all things in common. The unity brought to this group of servants is infectious. It inspired good works, the spread of the gospel, generous and gracious hearts. Ephesians 4.3 commands us to make every effort ourselves, or excuse me, to make every effort to make ourselves united in the spirit, binding ourselves together with peace. I find this unity at Evergreen when we read the flourishing language. Alone, together, wholehearted life. Once the Holy Spirit had been revealed to the apostles, they experienced the extreme acceptance of each other, of the unity of the body of Christ. And they began to practice wholehearted life. There was not a needy person among them. Even as the apostles were arrested, they maintained a unified love for each other, steady communication, prayer, and support. As I was discerning what to share with y'all this morning, I read bits and pieces of Cole Arthur Riley's Here This Flesh. In her book, she devotes a chapter to the expression of God through belonging. I read her passages with frustration as I wasn't exactly sure what God would have me say, and I didn't feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. And Cole says, I wonder if God feels as alienated from us as we do from him. Sometimes it cracks me up to think of the stories that describe Christ just boldly inviting himself over to people's houses for dinner, roaming around, telling people to stop everything and following him, multiplying food, but making everyone sit down in groups to eat it. Christ knew how to make his own belong. And I'll say I'm a sucker for all of Cole Arthur Riley's uh, writing, but I found this to be especially good advice as I was searching for the Holy Spirit in my life. I started with where I felt true belonging. But then I started thinking, I don't necessarily feel belonging everywhere. I believe that the Holy Spirit is a part of me, and I believe that the presence of God resides in spaces of community and accessibility, but I wouldn't want to limit God just to the places where I feel accepted. Centering myself again on Romans 1:19. I know that the Holy Spirit should at all times be plain to me, because God is constantly revealing himself. So I went back to the passage in Acts, and I asked God again, what does this mean? What I found is that God is revealed through beauty and awe, as well as accessibility and belonging. I think I got lucky, Corey and I didn't talk before this, but the wandering time had us look out the window and think, like, praise God for the earth and for the beauty and awe that we see today. So Corey was really on my same wavelength. <laughs> In the beginning of this Acts passage, there's a mighty rushing wind that comes down from the heavens. The Lord gave outward signs of his presence in a tangible way that the apostles would understand. Big, scary wind. <laughs> the Holy Spirit communicated both physically and also metaphorically, blowing out the fear of being without Christ and being magnificent and godly. We then see the miracle of languages, 
which not only allows folks to express themselves fully, but also offers beautiful sounds of phrases, the intricate choice of vocabulary that I talked about earlier, that can distinguish all types of love and worship to create beautiful poetry. Today, the choir is singing a less traditional selection of music. I won't spoil too much, but this melody includes, excuse me, this medley includes familiar folk melodies, simple harmonies, and with a more foreign canticle overlaid. Although this selection might not be the type of church choir song that we all sing along with, it is no less full of the presence of God. The beauty of joyful noise, combined with the belonging that we feel when we gaze upon our loved ones as they sing, that is the Holy Spirit at work. The hymn sung earlier in the service was a more familiar tune, and the accessibility of a familiar melody is also the Holy Spirit at work. I opened the sermon with an admission that I wasn't quite ready to talk about the liberated life of praise experienced by the apostles during the Pentecost. I close it by offering you this. Ogilvy, the author of the um, commentary Johnny Barber lent me, suggests that the liberated life of praise is the freedom to receive what the Lord will do by offering praise and gratitude for what has already been done. As you walk with God this week, recognizing the multitude of where the Holy Spirit is at work, you are inadvertently preparing your heart for more miracles to come, to togetherness and to beauty. Each week in worship, we practice silence. Um, so for this week and after this lovely um, sermon, I invite you to think about the most surprising um, place that you have felt the presence of God. Um, I'll bring the chime to start us, and then I'll bring it again in a couple minutes to bring us out. As we hear uh, the <clears throat> operatory selection that uh, Kate had, had alluded to in her sermon, um, I invite us to um, <coughs> reflect on what it is that we can we can offer uh, this world, that we can offer others, that we can offer uh, God in response to God's love for us. Um, so I'll pass the offering plates uh, around, uh, one on each side, um, and also uh, reflect on. Um, The, the many ways that we can um, share our voices and uh, our resources to help people belong and to find uh, uh, accessibility in, in different circles in which we are uh, in which we are part. Let's go to God with this our offering.
I invite you to pray with me. Gracious God, uh, for all that we can offer uh, to the health of ourselves, to the health of one another, and especially to those who are most in need of liberation and uh, joy and of care, we give you thanks. We pray that what we offer goes to your dream for this world. In your name we pray. Amen. Please rise for our doxology, the lyrics of which are printed in your bulletin. Pastor Beatrix has said, uh, during prayers of the people, we multiply our joys and divide our sorrows. Uh, here at Evergreen, our, our practice of prayers of the people is that I will open us in prayer. And you're invited to offer up any prayers that you have, an a, a, a enthusiastic joy or a really deep heartache or concern or anything in between. Um, and if you're joining us online, you can type your prayers into the chat and then Mark will read them uh, aloud. Uh, and then I will repeat a summary uh, into the microphone for all to hear and to hold. And we will, uh, I will say then, oh God, and you're invited to respond. Hear our prayers. Let's pray. Uh, and you can do, uh, join us in that prayer in the words printed in our bulletin or the words closest to your own heart. Let's pray together. Our maker, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to rise in body or spirit as we uh, sing our closing hymn number 625.
as you leave this place, know and trust and believe that you are one of God's beloved, that you are loved, and nothing in life nor death can separate you from that. So leave these doors in peace to love God and love your neighbor. It's just that simple and it's just that hard. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for that.